Okay, so lecture 4b on interval notation and functional notation. So we introduced the concepts of functions and um, functional notation a little bit in the previous video, but now we'll talk about it a little more, more detail. Um, one of the very nice things about interval notation is you can use it to describe parts of graphs. So what's a function? Something that looks like that. An expression with a bunch of x's in it. There is a function. And functions can be really long, and so one thing that you'll find out about mathematicians is that we like to write things short, in shorter ways. So we have something called functional notation. So we'll say f of x is this, and so instead of having to write that out all the time, I can just say y equals f of x, and then um, if I've said f of x is equal to this, then you know that that's what this f of x stands for. So... If we're dealing with functions that are written really long, we can always just write y equals f of x instead of writing out the expression every time. But the functional notation turns out to be actually very useful. We can do some kind of substitutions. If we've defined our function f of x to be x plus 2 squared times x times x minus 1, we can calculate f of 2. We replace this x by a 2. And if we do that on one side of an equation, we have to do it everywhere else. So we just plug in a 2 everywhere there's an x. And we multiply that out. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 2 times 1 is 1. So this whole thing should turn out to be 32. What about f of h? Well, f of x is given like this. If I replace the x on one side with an h, then I have to do it on the other side. And I get h plus 2 squared times h times h minus 1. And since I haven't told you what h is, there's nothing else you can do. You could multiply it out if you wanted, but that would just be tedious and pointless at this point. What about f of x minus 2? This is a compound expression because it's got two things. This was just a 2, this was just an h, but this is an x with a minus sign with a 2. And when I have that much stuff, I want to think about it as encased in parentheses. Compound expressions should be in it. Uh, parentheses. So if I'm going to replace the x by an x minus 2, that means all of these x should be replaced by x minus 2 inside of a parentheses. So it gives me x minus 2 plus 2 squared times x minus 2 times x minus 2 inside of parentheses minus 1. And we can do a little simplification, not much x minus 2 plus 2, well, I don't need the parentheses in there. x minus 2 plus 2 is actually just x, so we'll get an x squared. x minus 2 inside of parentheses, there's nothing much we can do with that. Then x minus 2 minus 1, that's just going to be x minus 3. And that's as far as we can simplify it. But we'll see later that this ability to substitute things in and out of functions turns out to be really useful. Um, in this class, all our functions about numbers, not all functions have to be about numbers, but... Um, in, you know, in this class there. So if y equals f of x, right, our input is x, our output is y, and we want to know two things. What numbers can you put in for x? That's called the domain. What numbers do you get out for y? That's called the range. So um, usually by looking at a formula, you can figure out what the domain is, but figuring out the range usually requires a graph. So here's a, func here's a graph of a function. In fact, it's the graph of this function, by the way. Um, what's the domain and range of this? Well, usually when you see graphs like this, if they're cut off, it sort of just means they keep going sort of off to infinity there. So the domain is all x. No matter what x you use, you can plug in there. And if you think about that, if our function is this, all we're doing is adding, subtracting, and multiplying. And you can use whatever numbers you want for that. There's no problems with any of that. What's the, the range, though? The range is all the y's you get. And this graph has an interesting point. It's got a minimum, right? That's the bottom of the graph. The smallest y you get out of this looks like it's about minus 1.6. That's the smallest y-coordinate. So whatever point you have on the graph, it's y-coordinate. Look at all these points. All the y-coordinates are bigger than minus 1.6 because this is a graph that's got a bottom. So your range, all your y's that are greater than or equal to minus 
And if there was a top, then it would be um, less than that. So domain is left and right. It's how many, what X's can you use? Range is up and down. That's what Y's do you get out of your function. Okay. So the domain of a function is numbers that can be put in for X. The range of functions is numbers that are output as Y. So here's a function. This is the entire graph of the function. There's nothing else there. Um, how do we know that this is a function? Passes the vertical line test, which I'll just write as V-line test. Right. So what is its domain? Domain is how far you go from left to right. So the domain, x is between minus 10 and 10. Right. So it's the left x coordinate of the leftmost point to the x coordinate of the rightmost point. The range is from the bottom, which is minus 5, all the way up to the y coordinate of the top which is four. So it goes from here to here. So you can think of this domain and range for this function as being kind of a box. Everything happens inside that rectangle, which goes from minus 10 to 10, that's the domain, from minus five to four, that's the range. What is f of six? What's this question asking? Oh, I'm having trouble writing. F of 6 is asking the question, if x equals 6, what is y? And that's not too hard. You go to 6, which is here. That's my x value. And I go down to the graph. I get this point. And I go over to here to find out what the y coordinate is. All right, so the notation is, if I plug in x equals 6, I want to know what's the y coordinate of the point on the graph that's got x coordinate 6, and that's minus 4. f of x equals 1. This is saying here, y equals 1. What is x? So since there's lots of black stuff on there, I'm going to shift to red for a moment. y equals 1 is here. Right? And if I go to the right, all the way through my box, I find that I hit the graph here and I hit the graph here. So this point looks like x is my, uh, 2.5 and this point has x equals minus 9. So if you have a y value, you could have multiple x values, right? Because it could be 2.5, could be an x. Because if you plug in x equals 2.5, you get 1 out. If you plug in x equals minus 9, you also get 1 out. So when you see this kind of a thing, f of x equals 1, that means y is the 1. What's the x that you're looking for? So interval notation. What is that? You'll see it a lot. Right? And it's a way, again, another shorthand. Um, the domain is x goes from minus 10 to 10, but we can write that as square bracket minus 10 comma 10 square bracket. The square bracket means that we have equalities here and here. So because it's less than or equal, we get a square bracket and we just put in the two numbers. Likewise, the range minus 5 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 4. It's the same thing as minus 5 comma 4. Right? The lower number first, the bigger number second. Um, y ranges from minus 5 to 4. It includes minus 5 and 4, so we have square brackets. Um, it's not too hard to get used to interval notation, um, and we'll see it again and again. I prefer this kind of notation, personally, because that tells me x is between minus 10 and 10, and y is between minus 5 and 4, and this doesn't. But um, my math lab certainly is not. My math lab prefers those notations. Okay, so interval notation is useful because graphs are identified by their intervals on the x-axis. So where is this function increasing and decreasing? Where is it positive or negative? So increasing 
and decreasing. Increasing just means going up as you go from left to right. So this is increasing, this is increasing. Decreasing as we go from left to right is where the graph is going down. So this part of the graph, the function is decreasing. And that's from, well, from minus infinity all the way to minus 2. And what we do to identify this chunk of the graph is we identify it by saying it's this part of the x-axis where the graph is decreasing. The graph is also decreasing from here, which is about, um, what I'm calling minus 0.85 about in there. And then this is about minus 0.6. So from here to here, from this point to this point, the graph is decreasing. But I'm going to label it by just using the um, x-coordinates. So this is x equals minus 0.85 all the way up to x equals, that should be a plus 6, plus 0.6. It's increasing. So from minus 0.85 to 0.6. Uh, it's actually decreasing there as well, sorry. Minus 0.85 to 0.6, it's decreasing. The two places where it's increasing is from here to here. So minus 2 to x equals minus 8.5 over this interval. And then from 0.6 all the way out to infinity, for all the x's out here, the graph is getting is going up. So there's the infinity sign. It's an 8 on its side. We use open brackets here. So this means minus 0 0.85 to 0 0.6 means for x's between minus 0 0.85 and 6, but not including those. Because at the top, you've got a maximum. It's not going up, it's not going down. It's the top of the hill. And at the bottom, you've got a minimum. That's where it's not going up, it's not going down. It's the bottom of the valley. So we don't include those as where the graph is increasing or decreasing. And so we don't have a less than or equals. We just have a less than, and that means we put a parenthesis there. Where is the function positive? So you have to translate that a little bit. Remember, f of x is equal to y. So this is the same thing is as asking the same question for what x is, is y positive. So where is this graph above the x-axis? Well, this part is above the x-axis. This point is not. That's the x-intercept. It's actually on the x-axis. This part is on the uh, is above the x-axis. This part is above the x-axis. That point is not because it's actually on the x-axis. And this part is above the x-axis. So that's where f of x is positive. So what are those intervals from minus infinity to minus 2? That's that. And then from minus 2 to 0. And then from, I think that's 1, 1 out to infinity. So this interval on the x-axis this interval on the x-axis, and that interval on the x-axis. If we have three separate intervals, one notation we use to string them together is to use a u for union. means this interval, and this interval, and that interval. Um, and that tells us what the interval notation is. And so that tells us where that function is positive. And it's a little introduction to um, interval notation. Okay, odd, even, or neither. Remember that, um, well, did I mention odd, even, neither? I think I did in the previous vi video. Um, even means that it's symmetric over the y-axis. Odd means it's symmetric over the origin. So even symmetric over y-axis. What does that mean? It's a nice phrase, but what does it actually mean? Um, well, if I pick a point, 
say one comma one on my even graph this one will be even <clears throat> to be symmetric over the y-axis means that I have to have this point minus one one on the graph and now that's even over the symmetric over the y-axis if I have the point two comma minus one on the graph that's this point then I have to have the point minus two minus one on the graph right and if I have the point minus 1.50 on the graph then that means I have to have the point plus 1.50 so every point that's on a, on one side of the graph has to have its mirror image on the other side of the graph so if I'm going to string this together as a graph of something right if the graph looks like that on one side it has to look the same on the other side then if it goes down like that it has to go down like that as well and then if I decide over here that it's going to go up then I have to decide over here that it's going to go up and so this is even because it's a mirror image of itself on that and what it means is that if you have the equal and opposite x values then you have to have the same y value so for odd functions That's symmetric over what's called the origin. Here, if I have the point 1, 1, that's this point, I want to have the point that's down in this corner. So minus 1, comma, minus 1. So if a point is on there, flip the x-coordinate to negative, flip the y-coordinate to negative, that means it goes over here and then down. <clears throat> so if I have the point 2, minus 1, on the graph what's the sym symmetry for odd I would want to have minus 2 plus 1 to be on the graph change the sign on both of them and then if I have the point minus 1.50 well if you change the sign on both of them you get plus 1.5 but changing the sign on 0 doesn't actually change anything and so if I have this point on the graph then I have to have that point on the graph so, what does my graph have to look like? Well, if we're going to put that part in, if I pick a point, I need to have its opposite down here change the sign on both points to be on it. So it would have to look like this. And if it came down like that, it would have to go up like this on the other side. And then if I wanted to go off there, it would have to go down there. So here, every point is matched up with the one that's got the opposite sign on both the X and the Y. And that's what odd means. And you can just look at the pictures and can tell you whether it's even or odd. So, to be odd, you need to have a point in the negation of its, uh, in the negative values for its coordinates on the graph, or neither. To be even, either you have to have both of these, or neither. So here are three functions. So which is even, which is odd, which is neither. So, here's a formula. You can plug in the values. 27, 6, 3, 6, 27. If you notice, if I take equal and opposite x's, I get the same y's. So that's even. If I take this function, oh, this is g of x. And this is y equals h of x. Too much cutting and pasting. If we take g of x and you plug in minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 into this function, you get minus 98 minus 1, 0, 1, 98. So, if I take equal and opposite x's, I get equal and opposite y's. So that makes it odd. Now for the x to the fourth minus x, if you plug in those numbers, you get 18, 2, 0, 0, and 14 as your y. If you take equal and opposite x's, there's no relationship. Right? 18, 14, they're not equal, they're not the same, and they're not equal and opposite. So this is neither. So how can I tell just by looking at the functions for even if your formula is this? Well, we want to know if we plug in a negative x, the opposite x, do we get out exactly the same thing? That's what even means. Well, if we plug f 
If we plug minus x in for x, you get minus x to the fourth plus 2 times minus x plus 3, 2 plus minus x squared. We know a minus raised to the fourth power, in fact, raised to any even power, becomes positive. So this becomes x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 3, but this is the same as that. So that means whatever x I plug in, if I plug in its negative, I'll always get the same number out because all the minus signs canceled out. And that's an even function. For an odd function, here's our formula, x to the seventh minus x to the fifth plus x. What happens if we plug in the opposite of x, right? If we plug in 2, we get a 98. If we plug in minus 2, we should get minus 98. So if we plug in minus x, we get minus x to the seventh minus minus x quantity to the fifth plus minus x. If we raise something to an odd power, what happens to the minus sign? Well, it sticks around. So this becomes minus x to the seventh minus, well, minus x to the fifth is going to be minus x raised to the fifth power and then minus x. So we end up with that. But oh, I need to write in my left side. I can factor a minus sign out of all of this, and I get x to the seventh minus x to the fifth plus x. And this part, that's f of x. So if I plug, if I take an x value, I get this number out. If I take a minus x value, I get the same number out, that's this, but with a minus sign attached. So if you plug in 2, you get 98 here. If you plug in minus 2, you get minus 98. So that's odd. Neither. Well, if you plug in f of, oh, this all should be g's, h of minus, h of x equals x to the fourth minus x. But if I plug in the opposite of x, what do I get? I get minus x to the fourth minus minus x, <clears throat> which equals, I'm running out of space here, that's why I'm uh, doing it that way, and hopefully everything is still visible. Um, and that's, well, the minus sign goes away here, x to the fourth plus x. So this and this don't have any real relationship to each other, which is why you get different x's. You get number, you get y values that don't have any relationship to each other when you plug in equal and opposite x's. And so that's neither even or odd. So what's the shorthand? Why are they called even or odd? Even powers are even functions. If all the powers you have are odd, it's an odd function. If you have a mixture of even odd, it's neither.